Hi, if you're wondering how to find investment properties, perhaps you're priced out of the area that you live in and you're struggling to find stuff that will actually find investment opportunities that stack up. Uh, as I said, perhaps you're priced out of the area that you're in. Then in this video, we're going to be going through a step by step strategy of how you can not only find unlimited number of uh, investment opportunities remotely. So in an area that you don't live in. But we're also going to be answering a lot more other questions to help you along your journey. So this is the Successful Property Investment Secrets, the number one resource to helping you go further, faster in your property investing journey. Each week, we reveal useful strategies and resources and tips used by some of the UK's most successful property investors in order to help you cut the learning curve and achieve your property goals. So if it's your first time to the channel, you should consider uh, subscribing in order to stay up to date with this ever-changing and dynamic industry. My name is Azir Thatcher, and now I'm gonna de delve deeper into this video. So, um, I'd like to preface this by saying that before I kind of get into the step-by-step -step, uh, strategies, that you need to um, bear in mind the four pillars of uh, when it comes to investing. If you don't know what those are, I'll put a link to another video either in the description or a link up to it in, in the cards. And essentially they are, um, first of all, you need to in, uh, invest in an area of high rental demand. Uh, secondly, you need to make sure that any property investment that you're um, purchasing will end up with a good amount of cash flow. So essentially profit. So uh, the third thing is that you need to really be making your money up front. So you make your money when you buy, not necessarily when you sell. OK, now the fourth thing is making sure that you know your exit. So start with the end in mind, essentially. And again, I'll link to another video that I've uh, created that expand on all four of these points and kind of delves into that a lot deeper and give you a better understanding as to why that's so important. But. As I said, the purpose of this call is really finding what I refer to or is what a lot of other people in the industry refer to as your property investment gold mine area. The area where give it wherever you're wherever your given property investment strategy is, you need to find an area in the country, uh, in uh, in a city in this country, in the UK, whereby you can find lots of those kind of deals. And in this video, we're going to go through step by step how you can do that, regardless as to whether you live in the city or not. So if you're a Londoner, for example, looking to invest up in the north or down in the south or anywhere like that, you don't necessarily want to have to go out there, spend the whole day out there traipsing around different uh, estate agents and things in order to try and find a deal. This strategy will actually help you identify um, the areas to invest and then you'll be able to locate the properties that you're uh, that fit your strategy and then from then on you can either go there yourself and have a look at those um, properties and then make offers or you can find someone like myself a property sourcer who will actually be able to go out and view those properties for you give you feedback and from there you can then move forward so the number one thing uh, the first the first thing step one is to actually call letting agents so the, what you're going to do is you're going to do what we call area research desktop research okay and what you're going to do is find three pick a city and then you're going to call three uh, letting agents in that city and then you're going to ask them um, these three sort of main questions. So the first thing you're going to call up, you're going to let them know that you're an investor from out of town. You're looking to come to the area and start uh, uh, growing your investment portfolio and you'd like their expertise. You'd like some of their, their help. So you're going to ask for permission first. Of course, they'll uh, generally they'll say yes. And when you call up, try and make sure that you're speaking to not just like the Saturday girl or the Saturday um, boy or staff type of thing, someone who actually uh, really works in this uh, in the lettings department actually is knowledgeable of the lettings area and then as i said you're going to ask them these three uh, uh, three main questions so the first question is you're going to say you're trying to establish an area that has the biggest uh, demand at the moment okay so the way that you're going to do that is you're going to ask them um if i were to bring you uh, right now um a property and it was going to rent really fast what would it be and uh where would that be so the idea is you're trying to understand in any city you go to um pretty much it's 
you know, widely accepted that if you get a one or two bedroom flat right in the middle of the city centre, then obviously that's going to rent because you're going to get a high um, uh, demand there of um, people looking to kind of rent that type of property. But you're looking for something different than that. So you want to dig a little deeper and, and ask some kind of questions and they should then be able to reveal to you whether two bedroom houses, three bedroom houses, four bedroom houses, detached, terraced, um, flats, they'll be able to let you know in that particular city um, what works so well. And if it's a larger city, there'll be uh, multiple strategies or multiple types of properties that work in a given area. So closer to town, you might find the one and two bedroom flats work. As you move slightly out of the town, you might find that uh, uh, two and three bedroom properties work better. And then within pockets of an area, you might find uh, if you're looking at doing HMOs and stuff, there'll be pockets of an area that work better for HMOs um, than others. And HMO, by the way, is just a fancy way of saying shared accommodation, okay? So think of student accommodation, um, professional sharing a house, that type of thing. So the idea is you're trying to establish the area of high rental demand. And the reason for that, as I said, is it ticks the um, number one box of the uh, property investment pillars, which is for buying in an area of high rental demand. And the reason for that, obviously, is because um, you want once the property is done up, you want to be able to rent it out quickly and have um, uh, reduce your void rate. So the amount of times that the property or a room in a property remains empty, you want to keep that as close to zero as possible. So that's why you're trying to find what actually rents really well at the moment. And if you speak to a couple of different agents, like I said, about three different agents, you'll start to build up a picture of the areas that are good and also verify what one agent, let an agent have said compared to the other. Now, the other thing that's also really important is um, knowing where the JK areas are. And this is what I refer to as the uh, Jeremy Kyle kind of areas. Now, if you're in the UK and you would you probably be aware of a TV show called Jeremy Kyle. Um, it was kind of like uh, the uh, how Jerry Springer used to be um, many years ago. And uh, it tends to be people that um, are very argumentative um, and what some may consider as being uh, lower down on the um, on the uh, class uh, um, system if you like so um, people that uh, kind of almost could be looked at as like maybe asbo kind of people and this is kind of other people's opinions as well I'm, I'm not necessarily saying there's anything wrong with that type of person but um, if you're a remote investor that type of person you could imagine is going to cause you um, a lot more phone calls, a lot more, um, uh, you'll be a lot more involved in your property investing than if you were renting perhaps to um, a uh, white collar worker like, or, or someone like a doctor or, or, or someone along those lines. You can imagine they work really long hours, they come back, all they want to do is just relax, enjoy the environment and then move on. So you can imagine the two types of um, tenant types of people there and um, so you're trying to find out where the Jeremy Carl areas are and uh, the areas that may be as a uh, uh, in their opinion, that maybe as a remote investor, you'll probably want to avoid. And they'll kind of understand that if you say, you know, it's kind of Jeremy Carl uh, areas. I know this is try we're trying to be PC and everything, but as a remote investor, um, you want to be kind of as hands off as possible and not have um, a lot of headache. And it and, you know, there's good and bad in everyone. But. As you can imagine, the people that are fit that kind of demographic are going to give you a lot more um, uh, headache in general. Um, that's just in my personal experience. I've, I've noticed I rent to all types of tenants. I have all the different types of tenants. And certainly I have uh, it's a lot more labor intensive, admin intensive, a lot more head. It takes a lot more headspace dealing with that Um type of tenant. So you as a remote investor will want to know those kind of areas in a city of where you can kind of avoid. Okay, I think I've kind of uh, really hammered that point home. Then the next uh, question that you really want to ask them is what I'll call the Freaky Friday method. So I don't know if you've ever seen that film whereby um, uh, Freaky Friday where uh, I believe I can't remember the actors, actress's name, but they basically switched body so the mum who's the adult went into the body of her daughter and vice versa so um uh, that's what i mean by the kind of free friday method so you're asking the letting agent if you know you were me and it was your money that you were investing 
um, and you are trying to get a property, where would you go and invest? And they'll kind of let you know. And this is just their opinion. You're not trying to hold them, you know, bang to rights of anything along those lines. You're just trying to get their general opinion on uh, on matters. And they'll give you an idea. If I had 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand to invest, here's where I'd get it. More bang from a buck here than over there. If I had a bit more money, then I'd go over here rather than going over there. So that's the information that you're trying to glean as a remote investor that doesn't know the city. And if the more agents like that that you speak to, the bigger, it's like a small piece of the puzzle, and the more uh, you'll understand an area by speaking to more people. So if you speak to three people, that's generally enough to give you a base idea. The more people you speak to, the bigger the picture that you'll be able to develop from there. Now, step two, you're going to do the same kind of thing, but this time with uh, estate agents. So just before I kind of go uh, on a bit more, I just want you to uh, ask you, if you're enjoying the content so far, then please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up because it does help me to know to make more videos like this. And um, if you know someone that uh, might find this uh, video interesting, then please do let them know about it as well. So step two, as I was saying, you're going to do a similar thing with estate agents. You're going to ask them specifically, um, where's the, so the biggest uh, demand at the moment in terms of people buying um, property? OK, not necessarily where they're selling, because with a estate agent, they might try and push you towards a uh, uh, property that they've actually got that they're selling but you're trying to get a general overview of where people are buying at the moment and then you're going to ask for properties in that um, sort of area and actually when you go to speak to them you'll be able to ask them based on what the letting agent has already told you have you got this property in this area um, in this sort of area and then you kind of kind of go from there okay so that's what that's really important as well now step three what you're going to do is um in fact, just before you get to strip three, what you you'll ask them, you'll ask them um, if they've got any properties in those areas um, that either they recommend or that the letting agent has sort of recommended, and you're going to ask um, uh, to send for them to send you over details. They send you over details. You'll be able to do your own, uh, continue your own research using online portals. So some of the portals you, you can use. Most popular one is generally Rightmove. It's one of the biggest portals and where a lot of people put their properties, uh, a lot of agents put their properties for sale. There are others as well. There's things like um, Zoopla is another really big one to go and check out. And then there's things like On The Market. Um, that's another good one to actually have a look at. There's Prime Location, which is another one to have a look at as well. So there's a four um, property portals that you can actually um, look at. And what you can actually do is go into Google and just um, type in a search of um, uh, properties for sale and there'll be a list of um, websites that are selling them. So it's not just the main websites like Rightmove. You can also look at some of the smaller websites whereby you'll have things like um, uh, for sale by owner. So uh, you'll also get things like um, uh, Purple Bricks is another good um, website because a lot of times the owners are actually uh, cutting out high street letting agents and using online letting agents. So you can, again, look for portals like that to kind of do your research. You can use classified places like um, Gumtree is another place where people are actually selling stuff. eBay, even where people are actually selling stuff. So you can actually use these per portals to actually look for properties that people, that the agents have already told you, these are the areas, good areas to have a look at and to invest. Now, once you've done all of that, um, one of the things I said to you as well was with regards to the four pillars was to make your money up front. Now, one of the ways to do this is to add value to a property. So let's say you've got a property that's been sold um, pretty is has got an asking price for probably pretty much what it's worth in its current state. One of the ways you can add value to the property is by uh, putting on an extension or building or converting the loft or things like that. You have to do your research, obviously, and speaking with the agents to see would a loft conversion really add that much value to the property? Is it really worth it? That kind of stuff. So you can have extensions. Um, and with the government's current permitted development rights and the, the way they've been a bit laxed, and they're a bit more relaxed on things, then there's quite some stuff that you can do, uh, especially with regards to building out um, towards the back of the property or extending the property out the back, out the side and out the front. There's uh, quite a few things you can do under permitted development rights, which means you can just uh, get things done quicker. Um, also, if the property is in need of modernization, so perhaps you might have a property that's in probate, as an example. Probate is just basically um, where you've got someone, an elderly person who's lived in the property for a long period of time. They've passed away. The property's then gone to their family or to the executor, and uh, they have no desire to be a landlord or landlady or, or uh, own uh, 
uh, residential property. So they just now want a quick sale. And if you're in a position to be able to move quickly, um, then you can obviously then purchase that property at a discounted rate. Usually you can buy it at a discounted rate because the property needs work into it. Usually it's full of modernization or some modernization. So it might not need new electrics, new central heating. Um, it might need uh, new carpets, general painting and decorating throughout, a new kitchen, new bathroom, these types of things, because the elderly person has lived in the property for like, you know, 30, 40, 50 years or so, and hasn't really done much to maintain the property. And so, so long as it's structurally sound, all the other stuff is not too uh, difficult to sort out. A few thousand pounds, good build team, you can get that sorted out uh, in no time at all. So what happens is you're buying a property, let's say at a hundred thousand pounds, and you've done your research and you know that the street uh, will support sales of around an average of 150,000 pounds. So by the time you put in maybe 20,000 pounds worth of work, um, and then get the house revalued, it gets revalued at £150,000. So therefore, you've got £30,000 worth of equity in there. Now, you don't have to refinance or withdraw that money. You can just leave that equity there in the property, knowing that if you have to sell the property quick, quickly, even though it's worth £150,000, you know you could then sell it at you know, £140,000, £130,000 or something along those lines. And people would be uh, depending on why you're selling, obviously, but you'd, you could find people if the house is worth 150 and you're selling it at 130, knowing that, you know, you're going to make 10 grand and move on and you've got to have a quick sale that is attractive to the next buyer and they'll be able to buy it off of you. So that's a really good exit strategy right there. Um, I've, I've, this is why I was saying at the beginning, buy with the end in mind. If you know you had to maybe sell quickly, have an equity in there that you could then um, almost pass on to the to the new buyer will help you to sell the property quickly if you needed to. Keeping the end in mind, so if you know you want to rent to uh, working professionals, then you're going to buy in an area where working professionals want to be and then do your house up accordingly. So doing your house up to working professional standard and doing your house up to a family standard are two different kind of things. This is why you need to start with the end in mind. It's the same with the four pillars there. So um, that's it for part one. I'm going to make this video is part one. I'm going to make part two which is now that you've uh, found your uh, gold mine area, how do you then find the property that you could potentially purchase within that gold mine area? That's going to be in video two. So make sure you look out for that one. And again, as I said, if you have enjoyed this video so far, then please do give it a thumbs up because uh, I'll, I'll then certainly make more videos like that. Uh, question of the day. Um, what's your investment strategy right now so if you had an area where you would uh, find lots of um uh investment properties that fit your strategy what is your strategy what kind of properties would you be looking for if you let me know in the comments below then i'll uh, answer that if you've got any questions or anything like that then please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below and i'll do my very best to uh, sit there and uh, answer them for you. And again, if you do know anyone that might be interested in this kind of content, then please do let them know about uh, this video. So if you were watching this and you've been wondering who on earth am I, you can probably see down in the corner over here. My name is Azir Factual. I'm actually a property sourcer uh, based in Plymouth in Devon in the UK. And I find investment properties for myself and my clients um, pretty much all day long. So. I'm making this video to kind of help people and pay it forward because a lot of people have helped me along my property investment journey. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, that's how you find your property investment gold mine area. That's how you're able to invest in, uh, start investing in property remotely. So even if you don't live in the city at all, um, you can do a lot of research online and, and actually move forward with confidence as well. So I, I'd just like to thank you very much for watching. And um, again, if you've enjoyed the content, please do give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please do make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the little notification bell that pops up as well. Uh, so that'll help. That will basically give you a heads up as to when we post new content so you can uh, stay ahead of the curve there. So uh, remember, knowledge is power and uh, we can power, empower each other uh, by sharing more knowledge. So if you know anyone that likes the video, again, please do share it with them. Until next time, uh, invest with speed, uh, invest with knowledge. And bye for now.